Hi, my name is Diane Schuster, and you're watching one of a series of videos that demonstrate the capabilities of Cozy Rocks SSIS Plus, which is a software suite of tasks and components for SQL Server integration services. These demonstrations were built using SQL Server Integration Services 2005. The Cozy Rock tasks and components are available for SQL Server Integration Services 2005, 2008, 2008 R2, 2012, and 2014 in both 32-bit and 64-bit editions. For more information, please visit www.cozyrock.com. In this video, we're going to talk about the Salesforce Destination Component, which you can use to integrate or migrate data to the Salesforce service. This component comes in a package of tasks and components called SSIS Plus that complements the standard SSIS. In CozyRack's SSIS Plus product, we provide source and destination components for Salesforce, which support both 32-bit and 64-bit modes. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how easy it is to do an upsert of some accounts into the Salesforce service. An upsert inserts new records and updates existing records based on an external ID that is maintained by some external database. In this demonstration, the source of the data will be an Excel file to make it super simple. Next, I'll show you how to update the owner of the accounts. Again, I'll be using upsert and I'll be using external IDs to not only indicate the account record I want to update, but also to indicate the new owner to associate with the account. Now I want to show you how to install the Salesforce destination component in SSIS. First we right mouse click anywhere in the toolbox and we go to choose items. and then we go to SSIS data flow items and scroll down to find Salesforce destination component and then we check in the checkbox and click OK and now you can see it shows up in our toolbox. I want to show you how to set up an external ID in the Salesforce service so we click on setup and then go over to the left side and expand customize and we're going to go down and work on accounts so you see here it shows a fields option so we'll click on that and all of the standard fields are at the top and then we scroll down until we find the custom fields these are all fields that we have added we click on new and we want to define the external ID as a text field so I can use letters or numbers. We'll click on next. And here's where we put the field label, how it will appear in the account object. As you can see, we've defined it before, so it showed up in a list. We set the length to 20. And now we're typing in the actual field name that it will be known by to Salesforce. This is not the actual field that we're going to be using in our demo though because I've already defined that. So we're going to put an underscore in it so that it will actually be accepted. This is how we indicate that we want this to be an external ID and we don't want to allow duplicates but we are not going to be case sensitive. These are defaults. We're just going to leave those alone. And click on Save. And now if we scroll down, you're going to see that the field has been established. Salesforce automatically adds an underscore underscore C at the end of any custom fields so that they're easy to tell apart from the standard fields. Here I want to show you the data that we're going to be inserting from our Excel spreadsheet into the Salesforce service. You can see in column A we have the external account ID, which again is to simulate an ID that's kept in a different database outside of Salesforce. And then we have an owner ID field in column E that uh, identifies a user that's already set up in Salesforce. And this identifies the owner of each of the accounts 
and there is an error in this column. The last record has an error in it. it. Instead of a P at the end, it has a B, so that'll show up a little bit later in our demo. Now I'll show you how to do an upsert of some accounts into the Salesforce service. You must use an external ID to perform the upsert operation. Upsert inserts new records and updates existing records, depending on whether the external ID of the record already exists in Salesforce or not. So first, to configure this, we'll set up our Connection Manager for Salesforce. So we right-mouse click down here, we click on New Connection, and we scroll down and we find S-Force, and now we type in our credentials. Okay, now we test the connection and it's good. And let me show you something under the Advanced tab. You can actually use this to select a sandbox if you're testing something or to use an older version of Salesforce. But we're going to be using the um, latest version of Salesforce, so we'll leave it as it is. Click OK. And now we're going to drag the Salesforce destination component onto the canvas. and we'll connect the two components. And now we'll go in to configure the Salesforce destination by choosing the connection manager we just set up. And we go to component properties and here our action, the default is create. We're going to select upsert for the action. Now I want to show you the mode parameter. It has a regular setting as well as bulk load settings and uh, the regular processing can't send more than 200 records in one call to the service. But the benefit is that you can get back the created record identifiers. The benefit of the bulk load processing is that you can send 10,000 records or more in one call to the service. However, because the records are sent queued for processing, the component cannot provide back the identifiers of the created records. And now we're going to select our destination object, which is the account object. And now we'll set the uh, external identifier field, which is called eAccountID underscore underscore C. And I showed you how to set that up previously in this demo. Now we'll go to column mappings. It looks like everything was mapped except for the external ID because the names don't exactly match. So we'll map those manually. Click OK. And now we want to be able to find errors in our input. So we're going to use the Excel Destination Plus component. Uh, SSIS comes with an Excel component, but um, we also provide an Excel Destination Plus component which supports 64-bit and 32-bit mode, whereas the one that comes with SSIS only supports the 32-bit mode. So now we select the same connection manager that we're using for our input. Uh, we have another sheet in there for the uh, error information to be directed to. So we select that worksheet, and now we'll go configure the columns or check those. Looks like we have all five of the columns that we're upserting, and we also have four error columns. Now we'll go back and set things up in Salesforce destination component so that the output is directed to that Excel sheet instead of uh, failing the component when we have an error. So we have to change this to say redirect row. Click OK. And now we're ready to execute. And we have success. So we'll stop debugging. And we'll go and check our results. That looks fine. As you can see, we only processed four rows because the fifth row had the error in it. Let's go take a look at where the error information was diverted to. So here's the Excel spreadsheet that the error information was redirected to. As you can see, the first four rows have minus one, which means everything was fine. 
and then the fifth row has the error in it. And our error message is invalid cross-reference ID, and that's because the last ID I changed to be incorrect. Instead of being 4P, it's 4B, so that was an error. And now we'll take a look at what we have in Salesforce. Alex's van service and Brazil Coconut Farm already existed, and as you can see, we don't have duplicates, so it uh, saw that those already existed and didn't add another one. It just updated it. And uh, so it added the website, and it also changed the account owner to me, Diane Schuster. And then we added uh, Smith & Jones University, and as you can see, it also put me, Diane Schuster, as the account owner, and our external account ID shows up in here. I want to give you a visual representation of what we're going to do next before I show you how to configure the component. We are only going to have three columns in our Excel spreadsheet, and we'll use only the external ID to identify the accounts we're going to update. In other words, we're not going to be using the account ID that's assigned by Salesforce. We're going to map the field named eAccountID in Excel to the field named eAccountID underscore underscore C in the account object in Salesforce. Then there's just the regular account name that we're mapping. There's nothing special about that. Finally, we're going to be working with an external ID representing the owner of some accounts. We'll be changing the owner of some accounts to the name Gracie Taylor. And just an FYI, an owner is represented by an object named user in Salesforce. So here you see a mapping from an external ID named E underscore owner ID to the regular Salesforce field called owner ID. Now that field is not defined as an external ID, so we'll need to actually do another mapping so that it understands how to do a lookup of the matching ID in the user object. In order to do that, we'll actually be mapping the owner ID in the account object to the E underscore owner ID underscore underscore C field in the user object. So keep watching to see how that's done. All right, so to set this up, we'll drag the Salesforce destination component onto our canvas. And we'll connect the two components. Go in and associate it with the connection manager for Salesforce. Now we'll go into component properties. And again, we need to change the action to upsert because we're going to be using an external ID or multiple external IDs. And the object will be account again. And then we'll set up our external ID, which again is the E account ID underscore underscore C. Now we'll go check the column mappings. Nothing has been automatically mapped because none of the names are the same. So we'll have to map them manually. So here's our external ID and we map that to e account ID underscore underscore C. And then we map the column called account to name in the Salesforce object. And then the external owner ID or e owner ID will be mapped to the regular Salesforce owner ID field, which again, if we just did this, it wouldn't work because Salesforce expects that field to be um, something that it assigned. So now we'll go to input and output properties and we'll go into external columns and we're looking for the owner ID. There it is. So we have a reference type of user and a relationship name of owner. So owner is what it's referred to in the um, account record, and reference type is what the actual object is called. So here's our external ID field, and we're going to type in the name of the uh, external ID we're using to make the lookup work to the uh, owner. So that's E underscore owner ID underscore underscore C, which is an external ID defined in the user object. 
Let me just interject here that if you're using SQL Server 2005, there is a bug in the Microsoft code and it will not accept it when you type in the external ID here. Um, so if you are using 2005, contact Cozy Rock and we'll tell you how to get around that problem. So now we're ready to execute. It was successful, so we'll stop debugging. And we'll go check our execution results. Looks like everything ran just fine. Now we'll go look in Salesforce. And as you can see, we have our Alex's van service and Brazil coconut farm here. And the account owner has been changed to Gracie Taylor. And we'll go and look at one of our new accounts that we had added. And that also has the account owner as Gracie Taylor based purely on an external ID. It's not using the Salesforce ID. In summary, I have shown how easy it is to migrate data from an external source to the Salesforce service. I used the upsert action since I wanted to maintain and use external IDs that were generated by a source outside of Salesforce. This component comes in a package of tasks and components called SSIS Plus that complements the standard SSIS. And that concludes this demo.